Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. Alright, so why do the levels of my statin drop maximally at the 8 hour mark, right? Why is it that the biggest reduction you get in my statin from training peaks at about the 8 hour mark? As you can see in this study, by the way, I referenced the study several times. The white columns refer to groups who did resistance training. You could ignore the black balls, that's for just cardio. As you can see, obviously, from training, my statin drops the most. We already know that. But the question is, why is it only at the eight hour mark, right? How come it doesn't stay down regulated for a longer time? Which will obviously allow us to put on maximum muscle in as short a time period as possible. Anyway, this is another episode of My Statin Monday where we talk about everything related to My Statin, which is obviously the most important gene and the most important molecule and pathway when when it comes to building as much muscle as possible. Now, if you're already familiar with my statin and my recap on it, you could just skip to the next chapter, or else it's going to be very repetitive. For those of you guys who are new, here's a recap on what my statin does. All right, so long story short, my statin is a gene, it's a protein that your body makes, and its job is pretty much to limit how much muscle you could put on, right? If it wasn't for my statin, we would all walk around like the fucking Hulk, right? So it does four main things it stops protein synthesis, it increases protein breakdown. It lowers satellite cell activation, and it makes you insulin resistant, which obviously leads to less muscle, more fat. So pretty much it makes you skinny fat. Phyllostatin, on the other hand, is another protein that your body makes, and it does the opposite of myostatin, right? It stops myostatin from activating its effects to its receptor. It also stops activating it. So this is the most anabolic molecule in the human body, phyllostatin. Even more anabolic than testosterone. In fact, testosterone's effects are mainly mediated through phyllostatin. Here are some examples of what happens when your myostatin levels are too high. For example, the reason why your legs shrink when you put them in a cast or you immobilize for a long time is because myostatin levels go up. The reason why HIV and cancer patients lose a ton of muscle so fast is also because their myostatin levels go up. And the reason why astronauts lose a ton of muscle mass in space is because, once again, when you go into space in a low gravity environment, my stand also goes up, right? So my stand is the bad guy if your goal is to maximize muscle growth. Here's an example of a rat at the bottom here. This is the control rat. This is a normal rat. And this is the rat that was genetically engineered to overproduce phyllostatin and to also lack the myostatin gene. So as you can see, that's the biggest rat we've seen in, in research. Four times the amount of muscle as a regular rat, right? So, and once again, normal levels of testosterone, normal levels of androgens. It is so massive, it's not even funny. And here's what the rat looks like when it's actually alive. Straight brawly, dwarfing the other rat. And this is lean muscle as well, extremely low levels of body fat. This is the monkey that was injected with phyllostatin. As you can see here, this is before the injection. This is only a few weeks after the injection, about three months after the injection. Absurd amounts of muscle growth. And this is the 10-year-old kid who was lucky enough to be born with a myostatin deficiency. Once again, he has normal levels of testosterone, completely natty. But look at his physique at 10 years old, right? His parents were freaked out. They brought him to the doctor. And yeah, he's, he's healthy, perfectly healthy. Normal levels of androgens. Didn't even go through puberty yet. Yeah, he has more muscle than the average grown-ass man. Once again, this is what happens when you're lacking myostatin or you're overproducing phyllostatin. And again, the reason why professional bodybuilders look so fucking huge is because one of the main effects of testosterone is to interfere with the myostatin pathway, mainly by upregulating phyllostatin or increasing the activity of the IGF-1 pathway. Several studies also back this up. As you can see here, one of the most important transcription factors, in fact, the most important transcription factor for muscle growth is accurate one. You can see here the correlation is 0.999, which is, in short, the most important transcription factor for hypertrophy and sure enough myostatin blocks this gene so you want to put on gains you have to down regulate myostatin you have to lower myostatin another study shows the same thing the correlation with the amount of gains you put on after training and your ability to lower myostatin is negative 0.82 which is massive myostatin is also the reason why old women put on a lot less muscle than young men or old men after training mainly because they have a hard time lowering myostatin even when they train. So as you can see here, old men have a big drop in myostatin after training. Young men have the biggest drop in myostatin after training, which is why, again, young men put on muscle so fast. Young women, decent drop, but old women struggle to lower myostatin, which is why they struggle to put on muscle mass. And several other studies confirm this. As you can see here, 
one of the main reasons why women cannot get as big as men, even if you inject them with testosterone, is because their myostatin activity is way too high. Myostatin is also responsible for insulin resistance. So if you have a dad bod, you're skinny fat, you have that tire around your belly, well, chances are you have very high levels of myostatin. Next, myostatin is also the reason why those who train with full body workouts or with high frequency tend to put on muscle so fast because the drop in myostatin after training only lasts for less than a day, right? The drop peaks at the eight hour mark and then slowly after that, myostatin goes back to baseline, right? It goes right back to fucking up your gains. So that's why those who train more frequently, such as full body workouts, nucleus overload, tend to put on muscle so fast, right? They're constantly keeping myostatin down regulated. Myostatin is also the reason why People who supplement with creatine tend to put on more muscle. It's not just the other effects of creatine. It's mainly that creatine also is a very, very powerful myostatin blocker. As you can see here, this is the drop in myostatin from the group that trained without creatine. And this is the drop in myostatin from the group that trained with creatine. Huge drop. And lastly, that's the reason why the World Anti-Doping Agency banned every single agent that drastically blocks myostatin or increases phyllostatin. So if you want to lower myostatin, you're going to have to do it naturally. And I have a ton of videos on that. Just watch the playlist. All right, so back to the video. So keep in mind, guys, training is the number one way to reduce myostatin naturally. As you can see here, every single bar here is every single study, or I should say relevant study on myostatin reduction from training. And as you can see, the biggest drops, usually about 40 to 50% drop, right? Which is a massive, massive drop in myostatin from training right so stop falling for these supplement scams out there right you want to lower my statin you have to train nothing is going to drop it as much again naturally right it's funny because people think that we go to the gym to build muscle not really you go to the gym to lower my statin and when my statin is lowered your body can finally go beast mode and start building muscle right so it's pretty much you go to the gym to say my statin let my muscles grow that's why people who are lacking the my statin gene don't even have to go to the gym right they just put on muscle just by fucking living Right, they just exist in a soul, whereas the rest of us actually have to train to temporarily, uh, quote unquote, turn off the gene. But anyway, back to the study. So to answer the question, why is it that the myostatin drop only peaks at the eight-hour mark? Right. Again, this is on average, of course. There are variations based on your genetics, but the main reason, if you look at all the studies, the same thing. Right. By twenty, by the twenty-four-hour mark, your myostatin levels are back to baseline. Right. So they're back to fucking you up which is, once again, why you have to train so frequently if you're natural. Now, the reason why it peaks at the 8-hour mark is because, guys, if it doesn't, you will just put on muscle relentlessly, right? You guys have seen all the videos of the, all the pictures of the myostatin deficient kids and myostatin deficient animals and stuff like that. If you constantly have myostatin low, you're going to literally keep on growing, right? As long as you're eating enough calories to fuel protein synthesis, right? Now, of course, we would love that, right? You know, you know I'm pretty sure you guys are listening like, wait, wait a minute. That's exactly what we want. But your body doesn't want that. Remember, guys, myostatin has evolved for a reason. Almost every animal out there has myostatin. So it's been conserved evolutionary for a very, very long time, millions of years. Even fish have myostatin, right? And the reason is simple. The body does not want to get too big. Guys, remember, building muscle, maximum amount of muscle, is not what the body wants, right? The body wants to, especially humans, we've evolved to be endurance, an endurance species, right? And that requires low amounts of muscle mass, right? Enough muscle to move, but not so much that it requires you to eat too many calories, or it slows you down during endurance hunting. I know it's shocking for some of you guys, but yeah, the body does not want to build muscle. That's why it's so hard to build muscle for the rest of us, right? And if you're genetically gifted, that obviously doesn't apply to you. But for most of us, again, that's why my style evolved. It's to keep you small, as shitty as it sounds. Because remember, when there was famines back then, and there were famines all the time, the first people to die were the ones that had too much muscle and not enough fat, right? Because think about it. If you have too much muscle, it takes a lot of calories, a lot of energy to keep you alive, to keep, to keep you moving. The smaller you are, and the more body fat you carry, the longer you can survive famines. People forget how much energy is required on a daily basis to maintain excessive muscle mass. Why do you think bodybuilders, even on steroids, why do you think they have to eat so much, right? Ask any bodybuilder, any IBB pro was on a crap ton of drugs, ask them, what do you hate the most about bodybuilding? They'll tell you eating, right? They don't eat every three hours because they want to. It's because they have to. It takes a lot of calories to maintain that ridiculous amount of muscle mass. So that's why... As a species, we evolved to have myostatin. It's to keep us from getting too big, right? And also remember, myostatin makes you store fat, right? It makes you less insulin sensitive. Now you might think, today we might think storing fat is a bad thing, right? But back in the day, storing fat was crucial to survive famines. 
right? So that's why the body does not like myostatin uh, at such a low level. It's up to us to constantly bring it back down, right? It drops from training and goes back to baseline within 24 hours. And if you notice, that's exactly the reason why every single study on protein synthesis, right, muscle growth, shows that protein synthesis peaks at about the 24-hour mark, right? Sometimes less than 24 hours, right? You can't escape this, guys. Muscle building takes less than 24 hours. Myofibular protein synthesis peaks within the first 24 hours after lifting. After that, it starts to go back towards baseline, so it's still a little bit elevated, but not significantly elevated, right? And study after study after study after study has shown this, right? You cannot find a single human study uh, without using steroids, of course, or whatever natural, where protein synthesis peaked longer than 24 hours. Not a single one. And you guys know me. I, I've looked through thousands of studies. I love this shit. Now, if you're on steroids, that's, that's a different story, right? Because if you're on steroids after training, you're going to get a huge spike in protein synthesis. It's going to start to go back down slowly. But because your testosterone levels are constantly elevated, it's going to take you a long time uh, for your protein synthesis to go back to, you know, pretty much baseline, right? So, that, so that's why people on the juice can train once a day, right? I mean, once a week. They could do chest on Monday and come back next Monday. If you're natural, you don't have that privilege, right? You get that big spike, boom, back to baseline. And if you've been training for a long time, it's even worse, right? That shit goes back towards baseline quick as fuck. So believe it or not, the longer you've been training, the more frequently you have to train. Right? Obviously, you have to manage recovery, you know, so you don't fucking overdo it. But you get the point. Without making this video too long, that's the reason why my and the biggest drop in my statin, peaks at around the eight hour mark. Simply because if my statin stayed low for much longer than that, your protein synthesis, your myofibular protein synthesis would just stay elevated through the roof, right? And you will literally just keep growing. You guys have seen what happened uh, on last Monday's video with the monkey that was injected with phylostatin or whatever. I mean, with the virus that increased phylostatin. He grew like a fucking weed, right? Because his myostatin was constantly being downregulated by phylostatin, right? Now, of course, like I said, we would love to have this, but that's just not how the body works, right? If you're natural, especially if you have average genetics, you have to bring that shit back down, right? At least every 24 hours, if not every 48 hours. Remember, guys, if you don't drop myostatin significantly after training, you're not building muscle. That's a fact. There's no way around it, and the research is clear on that. But anyway, guys, hope this video helps. See you guys in the comment section. All right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workouts, splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book you're also going to get free copies of any future edition so visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40 percent off coupon code nucleus of a lord or you could just buy the share at full price all right guys i'm out of here